Happy holidays, guys. Today is Saturday, December 23rd, 2023. This is the weekly recap video looking at the gamma exposure levels on the SPY that were previously mentioned in the video at the start of this week. If you are new to this YouTube channel, every week I've been releasing a video that is outlining the gamma exposure levels for the upcoming week. And then I like to recap how did price action trade around the levels because that's how we improve, that's how we get better, that's how we learn how price likes to interact with these zones and it can help us spot trades that we might have missed as well as grade our performance and see what we can do better in the future. So right here, this is the key zone to discuss because we have this marked off again, these levels are marked off at the start of the week. So before price action happens, you can get better by having a plan as well as being able to understand what is likely to happen in certain scenarios. So in this case here, P1 is the highest positive gamma strike and then the positive gamma exposure cliff. This is just a terminology that I like to call it because it's what it looks like to me. It looks like a cliff. This is where the gamma exposure in a sense just falls off the map. If we take a look at this right here at the start of the week, so this is the gamma exposure report that was generated on December 18th, pre-markets. These are the levels in which I'm talking about right here. So 475 to 476. You guys see these two large pillars that were protruding right here, and then the gamma exposure just drops. It drops all the way down to this low level here, and then it remains low for these three strikes, and then it's high again at 480. However, you don't really want to target 480 when the SPY is at 471 unless it gets over 476. It has to prove itself first, and it has to climb this mountain, if you will. So once price went from 470 one up to 475 and then it hovered around here and it stalled once it broke back below 475 that is where i decided to get shorts because price had proved to itself that it could not get above this area if it was to get back above this area then yes i would have taken a small stop but the reward was so much greater than the risk if we were to jump back to the chart now, we can see that this is our 475 and this is our 476. So it's just taking the data and the information on that graph and then plotting it on our chart and then waiting to see how price action responds in this area. Something I've repeated in time and time again is if you don't understand these advanced concepts such as gamma exposure, just think of it as your traditional support and resistance or your potential supply and demand zones. In this zone here, the expectation would be a lot of liquidity and this would be a place that if anyone is looking to close a lot of purchase orders, it will create some sort of supply up here. So if you were a buyer, let's just say you bought on Monday or you bought before the last week's FOMC announcement, you're aware that there's going to be a lot of liquidity in this zone so you can comfortably get your sell orders filled at a really good price. Once enough of those sell orders are filled, if sellers become more aggressive than buyers or if, we, or if buyers become very passive, it will cause some sort of a sell-off. But even if you don't understand that concept, again, just think of it as your traditional potential support and resistance areas or zones. This area right here is our high liquidity open interest area. And then we have our N1. So N1 was the strike price with the highest negative gamma. P1 is the strike price with the highest positive gamma. It is as simple as that. Potential support potential resistance. That's all this means to a beginner. If you want to read the gamma exposure white paper, if you want to get a little bit more in-depth knowledge, I would recommend reading books like the Option Volatility and Pricing book by Sheldon and, and checking out some of the other YouTube videos in which I've released, even the gamma exposure webinar. You can go way down the rabbit hole or you can just treat it as support and resistance because at the end of the day, all the advanced stuff in which we analyze and learn in the market, it just boils down to where are there likely to be some sort of turning points in the market? Where is their supply? Where is there likely to be demand? That's all we really need to know. So you can send yourself down the rabbit hole and burn years of your life, probably trying to become a professor of all this. Or you can remind yourself that at the end of the day, you're trying to be a trader and not necessarily an educator or a professor. We're not writing reports on this stuff. If you are, that's great. But for the most people, I'm assuming that are watching these videos are looking to be traders or are actively trading, which means you want to be able to convert this information and data and put it into action. This type of trading opportunity can be life changing for some people because the returns on puts for this day were well over a thousand percent, as mentioned in the previous video. Not to say it's realistic to expect that every single time, but that is the benefit of when you catch a really great short trade. 
So this is the star of the week, if you will. This is this uh, Wednesday, just given what happened here. And again, I did a dedicated video just outlining that. As we come down here, let's take a look at price action at the start of the week. So on Monday, what do we have? The price holds above this high open interest zone. That has been on repeat probably, I think, for the past four weeks or so. It's done exactly the same thing. If we take a look in the Discord here again, these are the levels at the start of the week. But let's just take a look at the previous weeks here. So this was the previous week. We held over the high absolute gamma strike as well as over this high open interest area. And then we gravitated towards the positive gamma strikes. If we take a look at the previous week, we had price consolidating in the high open interest levels. As long as it remained above it, it gravitated towards the P1 strike, which was the highest positive gamma strike. If we continue to keep going, what do we have? Price consolidated around this absolute gamma strikes as well as these high open interest areas. And then it gravitated towards the positive gamma strikes and so forth you guys it's just been repeat at this point repeat 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 it's just been a rinse and repeat and the market has been blessing us with the same opportunity almost every single week in this case here you guys know i'm not looking to be bearish i'm not looking to put on any aggressive short trades unless the market starts closing below these levels so on wednesday after catching this short trade i did not catch the whole move i was flat pretty much around here and then i closed out some of what i thought were going to be swings around here and then the markets continued to go lower so i did take a loss at the end of the day here because i did open up a smaller out the money broken wing put butterfly in which i was targeting this 465 because i figured hey if the market was able to get below all of these uh high levels i do know we were at support which was the highest negative gamma strike so i ran a small cheap out the money put butterfly if you guys are curious what it looked like let me just uh, pull it up for you guys here it looks like this here. So I just opened up this XSP. So I didn't go with the SPX because that's not the the SPX is my normal trading instrument and it's 10 times the size of the XSP. I already knew I didn't really want to be very aggressive with this position. So I ran something super small that cost 84 cents. I believe I grabbed about four of them and that was it. The next day, the trade was uh, for a loss. So I closed out some of them later in the day. However, I did swing calls here. And that was something I also just mentioned to so many other traders. The risk reward was so great. If the calls I was thinking about swinging were the 471 call but i ended up going with something really cheap and out the money because i didn't really want much overnight risk but again identifying that the opportunity was way too good we were at support the market just made one of the largest sell-offs it's made since october and usually when you get that type of price action especially into a support level there is going to be some sort of overnight futures activity that's going to cause a gap up if we just check out the calls right here this was it it's as soon as two minutes into the market open i was up about 243 percent another trader was up over 500 percent but it was just just pointing out again the four right here let's see so the uh the 473 calls for tomorrow it was only 13 cents 14 cents so i grabbed a couple two if the spy retraces that's where I'll likely have trouble. So it was again expecting if the SPY was to retrace. So this would be the retracement. It would likely have trouble around 473 area. So we ended up closing right at 473. But that is just the expectation which I had. The first thing I just took a look at was I already knew the gamma exposure levels for there. But the gamma exposure levels aside, it was also just understanding that this is where the 50% retracement would be. So if the market was to sell off, if we were to bounce right here at this 50% retracement, this has been probably one of the oldest tools in my box i've been sharing this on the youtube channel for a couple years already the 50 percent retracement after very extended moves is what you'll generally get and if price can hold above that area then the expectation would be continuation back up to the upside same works in reverse so that's where i got that target from it was understanding again 473 was a strike that i took note of on the gamma exposure but more importantly understanding 471 i expected the spy to be over 471 and struggle at 473 i could have grabbed the 471 calls they were a little bit more expensive i wanted something under 20 cents whenever i'm taking such a high risk it was a one dte trade so which meant if the market didn't gap up the next day even if it went up those trades probably those those calls probably would have been down over 50 percent so i didn't really want to take something where i would put you know a massive size on it which is also why i went with the spy instead of the spx i wanted something in a sense to protect if the market was to go lower i already knew my main trade in this case here would have been the xsp broker wing put butterflies however the risk reward was way too good to just take this call trade to the opposite side and ended up making more on the calls so it wasn't really a concern and then because the put butterflies were for friday it meant i was able to hold those until the following day just to see if the market would have then reversed and then ended up doing the same thing here on friday i went long some broken wing call butterflies to by the middle of friday some of us were still holding the uh put butterflies here in case anything happened but at that point these these this position was essentially dead it was down i think like 90 percent 
percent or so, but it wasn't really much of a concern. And that's just understanding risk reward. The main trade was obviously the drop from here down. I had some other positions. I'm always generally swing trading in the SPX. So I had some sort of out the money call butterflies targeting this area. Those trades ended up working out pretty well. Again, if you're curious, let's just jump to this here again just sharing for youtube purposes if you guys are curious what type of trades i like to take because i know sometimes i'll get that type of uh, question here but this was earlier in the week here this is the out the money call butterfly that i opened and i hedged it with some uh, some 4700 put calendars right here so it didn't really matter which way the market really went for me i was just targeting these high gamma exposure strikes and that's something i love about trading spreads when i do my analysis at the beginning of the week sometimes if i don't have some other bigger positions already in my portfolio i will then open up high probability positions so i was targeting this whole area it didn't really matter to me where the spx was i was just expecting to be in this general range right here because that's what the gamma profile told me and then if it couldn't hold this range my expectation was that it will stay within this range because that's where all the high liquidity was this is where the high open interest was all the expectation would have been one of these two zones so instead of picking or choosing i said hey i'll just go with both of them and then take my directional trades as i continue to wait for price to get to the key zones in which i want to take a a, a serious stance or a serious bias again once we flipped the script right here my bias was extremely bearish expecting a drop did not expect it this far down but it ended up working really nicely on top of that if i'm just going to turn on some studies and you guys can see we had some extra confluence so there's nothing sweeter than when you already have some sort of an idea or roadmap or a blueprint as i like to say at the start of the week and these are the quant trading app levels if you've seen any of the other previous videos on this channel then you should already be aware of what these quant trading app levels are but we had the weekly resistance so this is also calculated at the start of the week so not only did we have the gamma exposure telling us one thing but the quant trading app script was also telling us that this is the area right here to look for some sort of resistance on the spy for this week so this just provided an extra edge and it made me very comfortable to in a sense open up a short position if we were to zoom out turn off the studies one more time as I come around to the conclusion of this video, just want you guys to hopefully observe how price action has been trading around these levels. Prepare yourself for what should be a great 2024. Volatility is expected to increase next year because it is an elections year and having an edge such as this will really help ease a lot of the anxiety or should help ease a lot of the anxiety that comes with trading. Take a look at the price action again. We hold above it. Where do we go to the highest positive gamma strike? Price can't remain above this. We get a breakdown, backside weakness, price drops. Where does it go to? Right back to this price high open interest area straight down to these absolute gamma strikes this is where the first real bounce came the price went to 469 and then it bounced straight up to 471 before ultimately getting rejected it was still stalling out at 469 before it just broke right down but then it could not go any lower than 468 this is a level predefined where do we gap up to we head right back over 471 what happens at 471 price consolidates for a bit it, it forms this de descending uh, triangle before we break down where does price go right back to 469 and then it gets choppy right around our absolute gamma strike that's what's expected to happen around these high absolute gamma strikes then price ends up breaking out later in the day imply volatility started decreasing that's what happens around the negative gamma strikes if imply volatility cannot remain elevated price will tend to head up that is just the dynamics of gamma exposure and what market makers are doing then we get this gap up the next day and where does price go it stalls out back at the highest positive gamma strike i don't know how if i can express how excited i am about trading this way this is something that when i first started trading i wish existed this type of access to data was not as easy back in the days and most traders were not talking about this so most traders were not even aware of these types of advanced principles with uh, trading you used to have to spend hours every single day charting and you know doing all sorts of technical analysis and drawing as many you know trend lines that we can have on our charts charts would look super crazy like this and then they would be constant uh, changes every single day you'd have to readjust your chart yes many times than not if you're a great technical analysis and you know how to read price action it helped the problem is that it took so long a lot of the times especially if you're trading multiple instruments you'd have to spend all sorts of time pre-markets 
after the market closes. And now it's been consolidated, at least for myself, to less than 30 minutes. If I wasn't even recording these videos, it would probably take me 15 minutes at the start of the week. I would just, you know, I wouldn't even make it as pretty. I'm making it as pretty for you guys, but I already know what these levels mean. I already understand what should happen. So it would be a much smoother, faster process. But because I'm doing these videos, yes, it takes a little bit more time, but I'm sharing it for you guys for free on YouTube. So you have some sort of an idea of how other types of traders approach the market and you can understand and the objective obviously is not to have 100% win rates. The objective is just to keep your risk really low, which means it didn't have to sell off like this here on Wednesday. It could have very easily gone higher, but I know I would have only been risking about a dollar. And risking a dollar is nothing in the grand scheme of a trader. If you're taking 100 to 1,000 trades a year on the SPY and you're risking a dollar, you're okay. If you're able to squeeze out two to three bucks when you're right, the idea is just to understand have, keeping a low risk, high reward. If you can have a high probability, high win rate, even better. But at the end of the day, the most important commodity we have is time. And being able to reduce the time you spent analyzing your charts, in my opinion, leads to happier trading, as well as less paralysis analysis, because there's not too many things to look at. This provides the blueprint. There are other tools in which I will use, but this is automated from Quant Trading App. So I'm not spending the same amount of time drawing out these additional levels. And then I'm using VWAP. And then a lot of the time, it's just risk management. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. And as long as you guys enjoy these videos, I will try to keep it as a weekly upload. The upcoming week's analysis will be coming out the day after Christmas. So I will try to get those up to you guys Tuesday during the middle of the day or so, because I'll be likely recording it Tuesday during pre-market. So before the market opens, when the Gamma report will be the most accurate, at least for the analysis for the whole week. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy the holidays.